Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wolf Pit. When July 14th rolled around, I'd been on a carnivore diet for 75 days with a myriad of unbelievable results, including a very noticeable amount of weight loss, which the exact amount is still undetermined due to me being in a wheelchair and the lack of wheelchair roll-on scales in my area. I went from wearing between the 3XL and a 4XL t-shirt to a 2XL t-shirt and a bunch of medical related problems went away, which I mentioned in the previous carnivore diet video. And I mentioned something else we all don't want to talk about, but we all have to do it. Poop, or lack thereof. The amount and frequency of your poop and pooping drastically decreases. First, let's go over a few of the meals that I ate during the last 15 days on the carnivore diet. Then we'll talk about what happened to me or maybe I should say what I did after the first 75 days. This is the only picture of breakfast that I took, but it consisted of four fried eggs topped with crystal hot sauce, which were fried in ghee, my new favorite thing to cook eggs in, which if you're not familiar with ghee, it's simply clarified butter, which is made by separating butter fat from the milk solids and water in butter. And as we all know, anything butter related is delicious. Along with the ghee fried eggs, I had a half a pound of smoked breakfast sausage and six slices of thick cut bacon. And remember, generally, I'm only eating one meal a day. So if you're unfamiliar with the carnivore diet, the amount of food may seem excessive to you, but on the carnivore diet, when you eat, you eat until you're comfortably stuffed. So for me, one large meal a day has been filling me up until the next day. But everybody's different. And you may need to eat more or more often. And of course, several meals consisted of my favorite carnivore diet go-to, a 24-ounce ribeye steak, which of course was cooked in beef tallow. And once or twice a week, I also had some calves liver or chicken livers cooked in butter with my steak. Another dinner I had was two half pound cheeseburgers topped with pepper jack cheese. The pepper jack cheese adds a nice zing to your burger. Then we had some grilled chicken wings seasoned with Lowry seasoning salt along with some all beef hot dogs. I ate all of the chicken wings myself, which was about one and a half pounds, along with two hot dogs. Then we went out for dinner one night and I had a grilled 24 ounce bone-in ribeye along with a big piece of red snapper. Then July 15th rolled around and I went on vacation. It was just my daughter and I, and she begged me to eat normal food. And I told her that meat is normal food. I knew what she meant and I didn't want to limit our vacation to where we ate or what we ate. So I decided for a week, along with getting a little R&R, &R, I'd do a little R&D. So I ate all the foods that I wanted, but I did not overeat or consume alcohol. I wanted to remind myself why I went on the carnivore diet to begin with. So here's some of the foods that I ate while on vacation. One of my favorite things to eat during the summertime is a tomato sandwich. So we stopped at one of the roadside produce stands on the way to the beach and I picked up a huge red tomato. And then when we got to where we're staying, I sliced it up and made a big tomato sandwich on white bread with plenty of Duke's mayonnaise and salt and pepper. And of course, bacon would have made it better, but we didn't have any. And right away, after I ate the sandwich, I felt really guilty, but the guilt subsided because I knew on the following Sunday, once we returned from vacation, I would be picking up where I left off on the carnivore diet. Then we had some beef and chicken nachos, which made me mad because they sucked. So that was a non-carnivore meal wasted. How do you mess up nachos? Well, the place we ordered from figured it out. Then we had a spinach, artichoke, and jumbo lump crab meat dip with pita chips. I passed on the pita chips and had a few spoonfuls of the dip, and it was delicious. And this was definitely worth the sacrifice in the short term. And then we ordered a pizza. And unfortunately, we ordered a 42-inch pizza. The place where we got it was the only place around that delivered. And the only option they had was to buy a 42-inch pizza or pizza by the slice. They didn't have a small, medium, or large. And I sure wish we only bought two slices. And this pizza was a waste of money and a wasted meal off the carnivore diet. It was absolutely flavorless. My daughter and I only ate one piece each, but we didn't throw it away yet. We put it in the fridge to snack on for the next few days. And we ended up only eating two more pieces and then trashed it. If you notice the hole in the center, I was starving and forgot to take a picture before I took a bite. Next, we had a crab dip called Crab Remake, along with some slices of toasted baguette. Crab Remake 
It's just a fancy, creamy, cheesy crab dip, which is delicious, and I ate it on its own without the baguette. Then I had a fried oyster platter with coleslaw and french fries. I didn't eat any of the french fries, only the oysters and the coleslaw. I was definitely eating what I wanted, but not being a glutton about it. Then I had a fried seafood platter with flounder, scallops, shrimp, french fries, hush puppies, and coleslaw. I ate everything except for the french fries. This meal was definitely worth not eating carnivore for a day. And then we had another less fancy, creamy, cheesy crab dip with bacon, along with tortilla chips. Again, I only ate the dip, no chips. The dip was fantastic on its own. It didn't even need the chips. Then I got a piece of key lime cheesecake to take back to the condo. Fortunately, this was gross and I only took one bite of it. And this was the first. I've never had a key lime cheesecake that I didn't like. Then my daughter wanted donuts, so we got donuts. And I ended up eating about three of them. And that wasn't in one setting, that was over a couple days. After eating the donuts, I was starting to feel like my old self and I didn't like it. But I'm glad I didn't like it, because that's a good reminder of why I was on the carnivore diet to begin with. Next, I had Oysters Casino. I have never heard of Oysters Casino, only Clams Casino. These weren't as dry as they looked, and they tasted better than they looked. Then I had to have one more seafood platter, which had flounder, shrimp, scallops, oysters, coleslaw, and cheesy grits. And I almost forgot a crab cake, which was terrible. I ate everything except for the crab cake. Next, I got fried clam strips with hush puppies and french fries. I didn't eat any of the french fries, but I ate the clam strips and the hush puppies. At this point of the vacation, we only had two days left, and I was feeling terrible. My gut was bloated, my legs started swelling up again, I was totally lethargic, and just overall felt like crap. An hour or two after every meal, I was hungry again. I guess that's due to a fluctuation in my blood sugars. And again, I know we don't want to talk about this, but on the carnivore diet, I was only pooping once a day or once every other day, and they were small poops. By the third day on vacation, I was back to taking two to three big poops a day. Now for the last two days on vacation, we had deep fried jumbo lump crab balls that were absolutely delicious. And then from the same restaurant, I had two crab cakes, two hush puppies, coleslaw, and green beans. And the only reason I mentioned that they were from the same restaurant was because the crab balls were delicious and I thought their crab cakes would be the same. Well, I was wrong. They were soggy, gummy, and way too much bready. How do you go from making really good meaty crab balls to bad crab cakes? Needless to say, I ate most of the crab cakes the hush puppies, and the coleslaw. On our last night of vacation, we got a takeout pizza with ground beef and onions, which was much better than the first pizza we got, but it was still mediocre pizza. At this point in the vacation, I was ready for it to be over. Not from a vacation standpoint, because me and my daughter had a great time, but from an eating standpoint, I was miserable. I was lethargic, I was bloated, my feet were swollen, I was farting a lot, I was pooping a lot, I started having all the problems again that went away during the 75 days I was on the carnivore diet. I couldn't wait to get back home and get back on track, and I did get on track as soon as we got back home. I got four quarter pound patties with bacon from McDonald's, which hasn't yet made me start feeling great again, but I know within a couple days I'll feel great again. So in conclusion, Going back to eating the way I did before the carnivore diet was a huge mistake. So doing this for a whole week was a major mistake. I think maybe if you take one cheat day, once a month, or every other month, I think it would be okay. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.